I read somewhere that women in Nagasaki and Hiroshima, when the bomb fell, um, if they were wearing white kimonos with dark shapes on them, the white would reflect the heat away from their skin and the black would absorb it in. So they ended up with tattoos on the skin in the shape of kimono patterns. And that image just struck me. And so I literally started just with that image, a woman with birds burnt onto her back. It's a novel that spans 60 years um, and about five countries, but it's really a novel of two families. And if we're going to be really crude about it, one is of the East and one is of the West. And the different members of the family keep meeting up at historically crucial moments. Um, and it's about the interplay of the political world with their personal lives and how they sometimes survive it and sometimes don't. I suppose it must start with my own family story. None of my grandparents were born in the place they ended up. Three of my grandparents were born in, in India and then became Pakistani after partition. My fourth grandmother was born, fourth grandparent, my grandmother was born in Berlin, then moved to Delhi and then to Pakistan. Uh, so I had this awareness growing up of people who move about. He thinks she's still in mourning for Conrad who died. Um, and she, because she's scarred by the bomb, thinks that no man could ever physically be interested in her or attracted to her. Um, and he's the first man to make it very clear to her that those um, atom bomb burns play absolutely no ro role in the way he thinks about her. If anything, it makes him feel more tender towards her. Um, and that for her is, is a huge deal. Um, that she never dreamt that someone would be able to look at those burns and not see ugliness. Largely, I didn't know what I was doing when I started. I knew that I was interested in the bombing of Nagasaki, and I knew that the novel would eventually end up in contemporary times. And at first, I thought it would end up in a contemporary world with India and Pakistan both possessing nuclear bombs, both on the verge of war. But as I was writing the book, it became evident to me, although not for a long time, that it was leading to a sort of war on terror world. Reza's problem has to do with a meshing of his character and the place he's in. So he's growing up in a Karachi where there aren't a lot of foreigners. So he looks different because his mother's Japanese. And he feels this makes him an outsider because he's not generally recognized as Pakistan. He's Pakistani, he's teased for um, his Japanese-ness. And that would probably have been okay, um, except there's a point in his life where he starts failing exams and he feels himself a failure. Um, and this adds to his sense that his life isn't what it should be. Cricket is the great national obsession of Pakistan. It's the one thing more than any other that binds the nation together that we all have in common. It's also very often, or at least it has been, the one thing that we feel there is to be cheerful about. There are three points where cricket comes up. Very early on, we learn that the young English boy, Harry Burton, has been learning cricket from the Indian employee, Sajjad. Um, which is a sort of reversal of the colonial stereotype because, of course, the English brought cricket in. But it's already, you know, looking forward to a day where it's the subcontinent which dominates cricket. Um, later on, you have Reza, a young boy, looking at the cricketers in his neighborhood 
and feeling he can't join them. He's failed his exams, he feels like an outsider. And that really is a symbol of exclusion if you feel you can't even join the cricket game. So cricket becomes a symbol of community. Um, and much later in Afghanistan, you have a private military company um, and it, it's employing a lot of people from the subcontinent. And they all play cricket. And there's only one Westerner who'll play cricket with them, uh, who's the Englishman turned American, Harry Burton, um, and all the other, the Americans are sort of out of it. So it becomes uh, this racial divide as well between those who play cricket and those who don't. The most obvious threat to Pakistan right now is of course coming from the Taliban who have taken over parts of the country. But really the fact that there are people joining them, that they're achieving some member of success also really reflects back on the failure of, of governments over the years. Um, that there is so much inequality, there's so much poverty, that there's a vacuum created and a, um, a need for something to believe in. And a lot of extremist groups are able to plug into that. So the biggest challenge really over the next few years will be for the government to bring society to a more even keel and to supply them with you know, people with basic dignity um, by giving them just the barest things that human beings need to live a, a reasonable life. I think if you're writing about places like Pakistan and Afghanistan in the 80s, if you're writing about New York in 2002, if you're writing about Japan the day the bomb fell, how does it not become political? Even if you're only writing about what's happening in the domestic world, the political comes in through the doors and windows. Uh, and it's certainly a novel aware of that, and, and I don't shy away from the term political.